Hey, what's up? It's day 24 of the 30 day short bus build. We are coming down to the final wire. This is the last week of this build and a video a lot of you guys have been waiting for, the electrical. I have allotted myself three days to get the electrical done. And all that's left, left on this bus is to get the electrical put in here, do the plumbing and hang a gray tank and then the curtains. I think it's doable. We have been taking the weekends off. If we run into a pinch, I can, I have three days for the end of this month at the end of the work week, and I'm willing to give those up to get this done because I think having goals is important. And today is day one of the three days I've given myself to do the electrical. And this is day 24 of the 30 day build. I'm excited. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get everything we have for the electrical out here on a table so that way we can see it and then we'll go from there. If you guys wanna see how I wire up a bus, stick around, let's go. All right, everybody, that is the electrical system all kind of laid out on the table and the technology changes, right? So I've put out an electrical video before that I might take down after this one's up because, you know, do things come out? Technology gets better. Uh, things get cheaper. Now, this is a different system. It's roughly the same kind of system I put in my buses. This is a new system based on some new things that have come out. I haven't installed some of this new stuff before. We're going to install this stuff and hopefully it works as good as it looks in theory. I'm gonna talk you through what's going on here. These are my LED strip lights and then I've got touch dimmer switches right there. And then way over there are the tracks for these lights to go in. This is my shore power charging system, right? This is a lithium charger, and this is just a port that gets mounted on the outside of the bus, connects to this, so you can just plug an extension cord into it, charges your battery. I'm only doing a 1,000 watt inverter in this bus because, like, I don't really put anything in buses that use more than 1,000 watts. If you're using appliances that take more than 1,000 watts, you know, you probably need, uh, you know, a way bigger system. This is made for, you know, people like me who just need a fridge and some basic stuff and charge your phones and laptops. You need hair dryers and ACs and stuff. This electrical system ain't for you. 1000 watt inverter, it's gonna have a remote on and off. Now, this right here is a new battery from Renergy. It's 200 amp hours. That's the most battery storage I've ever put in a bus. Now, lithium batteries, it was pretty much about $1,000 for every 100 amp hours of power. It's been the standard for a long time. So a lot of companies coming out now, technology is getting way cheaper. That 200 amp hour battery was only a thousand bucks. So that's 50% of what they typically are. That's why I got that battery. I did get it on sale on Black Friday off Renergy's site. I don't know how much it is now. I will put a whole link of everything I'm using in this video, so if you guys do want to use any of this stuff, you can get a link to the description of the video. Now, this is the new component that I'm basing the whole system around, is this. So this is a 50 amp DC to DC charger, and it's also your MPPT ch charge controller. So in the past, I've always had a charge controller and a DC to DC charger. This is all in one in one unit, takes less space. I've never put one of these in before. There's a few benefits to it that I wanna talk about. Space, I would have to have two of these units size-wise to make up for what's all in this one thing. It doesn't have the digital display to tell you what's normally going on, so I bought this extra display that I'm gonna mount somewhere in the bus so I can see what my battery level's at. Now the other thing, that I kind of really like about this, uh, that's different than everything else I've done, is, and again, I haven't put it in yet, so don't quote me, we'll find out by the end of the video. But apparently, that unit, so it works the same way, but backwards. 
solar gets put to that and your alternator gets all put to that, right? Now apparently, when you have solar and your house battery is full, instead of your charge controller just going into float mode, it's gonna send that extra juice back to your vehicle's batteries. That's kind of a big deal. So the solar is gonna top off your house battery and your vehicle's battery. It's kinda awesome. Reading what I read about that online, that's kind of a really cool unit that I haven't seen anybody else putting all in one thing that small. So shout out Renogy, hopefully you didn't get me on a sales tactic and we're all gonna find out by the end of this video whether I like that thing. So that's kind of the main hub of the whole electrical system on this build. Now the rest is just wires and fuses and blah 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 blah. Right? This is kind of a new outlet that I think is really cool. Um, it's got a little 110 outlet there and a little USB. Boom. Hole saw. Easy. Oh yeah. And then back there, I'm using flexible solar panels. Just 200 watts. Because like this thing's mainly going to charge off of the vehicle's alternator. I've had 200 watts before. It's nice if you just post it up. You got sun. And you know, you're keeping up with a fridge or whatever. And there's no real big appliances in here. That's kind of the main electrical system. I talked you through it and I'm, not, I'm just gonna, I think we're gonna start with just kind of mounting all of the stuff going in. Like, we're gonna put the outlets in, we're gonna hang the lights up, we're gonna put the switches in. We're gonna kind of get all of the pieces in there and then we're gonna connect the wires all to it. So I don't wanna make this video 50 minutes if I can help it. I'm telling you what we're gonna do and then I'm just gonna show that happening and this is a different system than what I've done before I'm really stoked about this new unit specifically and then lithium battery is getting way cheaper let's get to uh, let's get to installing this and uh, I'm excited to get juice in this thing What's up? Welcome to day 25, good morning, by the way, of the 30 day short bus build. As you can see, we got a homie here today. This is Danny from Lindsay and Danny Van Life. What's going on, folks? And I'll put a link to his channel uh, in the description below, and it'll probably be around here somewhere. But he's going to help me get some wire in here, and we're going to get hopefully a lot done in this bus today. So let's get into the day.
Good morning. It's day 26 of 30 day short bus build and this is the third day of the electrical installation. Uh, I was pretty much just putting together like the main electrical components yesterday and Danny did me a huge solid and was just laying wire out inside the vehicle. So we're in a good position today to finish it up. I feel good about it and we're just going to keep keep putting this thing together and this is a new system and I'm hoping I like it so let's uh let's get moving So clean. of a 30 day short bus build. Danny, he's gotta go, but he left us in a real good shape. He's got pretty much all our wire over to the fuse block right there. And all we gotta do is just hook it up. So thank you, my dude. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks for letting me out. Heck yeah. So they do have a YouTube channel and I'll put it right here and in the description below. And you can follow them on Instagram too. And I'll put all that stuff in the description. Dude, thank you. Thanks, Definitely man. next time. I'll be back. All right, all right. We'll cool. Fun. 
All right, so he's got to take off and I'm gonna keep working on this. Good morning. It is day 27 of the 30 day short bus build. We are coming down to the final days of the build. We just been grinding on this thing. Last night, Danny left us off with basically, he got all the wires all hung and brought to the fuse block. So now all we really have to do is just get the wires hooked onto the fuse block and then attach the battery. I mean, that's all we're doing today. So I don't think it's gonna take that long, but we all know how that goes. And then hopefully the system works the way we hope it's supposed to. So let's, uh, let's get these wires put in the fuse block and get a battery in there. This kill switch completely separates this battery. We're gonna turn it on, and then we're gonna turn the 12 volt DC to D, or the 12 volt fuse block on, which is right here, and hopefully nothing blows up. Battery's on, and I noticed the light changed over here. Now let's turn the DC to DC on, or the, okay, 12 volts on, nothing blew up. So I'm gonna come in, we're gonna test everything out. Mm -hmm. We're going to check everything out. So, boom, fridge is on. Cool. So fridge has power. Let's check our lights. So underneath the bed is on. Boom, inners, outers, and then under cabinet. Let's see if this works. Yep, bam, it's got juice. So let's check our 12 volt. Turn it on. Let's see if it works. Boom, it's charging my phone. Let's see if our inverter turns on. going on with that <laughs> okay so there's a little switch on here to tell the inverter uh, whether I wanted to use the remote or not so I just clicked it down to the switch that tells the remote that I want it to work and Matt bam now you can use the switch out there so inverter work let's go check it inverters on let's go check the 110 uh. Yep, bam, charging. Boom! We're going to see if the shore power charging works. So check it out. Is it on? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a brand new DC to DC charger uh, that has a charge controller too. We haven't hooked solar up yet. I'm gonna turn the vehicle on, so we know that it can charge from shore power right now. Uh, we're going to turn the vehicle on and see if the little alternator sign turns on on the DC to DC uh, and see if it's charging our battery. So let's turn the vehicle on. Oh, bam, there it goes, we just turned on. All right. 
right, everybody, that is the end of day 27 of the 30 day short bus build. We were all estimating that we were going to get this thing done earlier. We were taking weekends off. The electrical is in. Let me uh, go in the back and talk you through that real quick. Here is the heart of the electrical system. Uh, this is the first time I've used bus bars. Not sure how I haven't done that before. The heart of the system is this Renogy 50 amp DC to DC dual input charger. It's a normal DC to DC where I have the vehicle line coming in here. Boom, going right here. Solar that I haven't put on yet. It's going to go there. And then it sends the charge out of this over here into our 200 amp hour lithium battery. I can turn the battery off completely right there and I have my 12 volt US uh, my 12 volt fuse block for all my accessories on this switch right here so I can kill the whole thing and then we have the thousand watt inverter over there with a remote switch out in the vehicle cab oh yeah and we put this cool little light underneath the bed which I've never done before and it's something I've always kind of wanted so you can see underneath the bed if you need to get in there for whatever reason. So now we'll go inside and show you what's going on in there. All right, check out the interior. I love the lights. We've got the heater. You just turn it on or off. Boom, kicks out. And then you got your fridge and turns on or off. Bam. And then we've got our, this is like the control panel for the DC to DC. And this is the remote for the inverter. And then this is our stove. We've got our lights. So this is the under bed. This second one is the middle row. And then third one is the outer row. And then this one is the under cabinet lighting, which I have light there and light down there. Cool thing too is these are on dimmers. So you touch it, hold it, and it'll dim. And then you touch it, and it's not that flickery in real life. It's just the camera doing that. But super cool. This is what all the lights look like. You got the track lights up there. You got underglow under there. Got underglow over there. Super cool. Now, 110, we have an outlet here with a USB and then we have two USBs to charge your phone right there bam and then over here this is our lagoon table it's where you're gonna be working the most and we have an outlet here and we have another USB port for charging phones things like that now I usually personally do a 40 amp DC to DC charger and a 40 amp MPP, MPPT charge controller. Typically, uh, what that means is you could have, hypothetically, 40 amps of solar coming into your battery and 40 amps coming off your alternator at the same time. That's a lot, right? That's what I put in every build I do. Typically, that's my standard. I tried something different on this one. It's a 50 amp. DC to DC dual input which I've never used and after doing some research it only puts out 50 amps total to your battery bank so that means if you have solar and you have power coming from your alternator it's only going to give you 25 from the alternator and 25 from solar kind of a bummer I didn't know that but there, there is a trade-off if I was going to do this again or I would recommend to you I would recommend 40 amp MPPT charge controller and a 40 amp MPPT DC or 40 amp DC to DC charger just you got more coming in there is a benefit to this system I don't have to have multiple units down there so I would have to have this big old charge controller for the solar panels and this big old DC to DC charger and it's all just in this one tiny little unit down there which this is a smaller bus so it's kind of a trade-off that's something that you guys kind of have to figure out. I did have to run a wire to a circuit on the van that's on just when the vehicle is on. I didn't know that, so I did run that wire. But everything seems to be working fine now, and 
this is kind of a different system I will put links to everything I used in this install and I'm not saying the one I usually do is better or this one is better I think they're both kind of different for different kind of things the one thing that I really really like about this one that my other one doesn't have is when your house battery is full it will trickle charge your starting battery so the solar panels will charge both your house battery and your starting battery that's kind of a huge benefit you can rest assured you're not going to run out of juice just like sitting around i kind of really like that so like i said you guys are going to have to kind of think about what's best for your situation i'll put all the links to everything i use in this install and hopefully by you guys watching this you learned something i try not to talk as much so i can make this video a little shorter and i think we are putting solar on next if you like bus building or you like bus life adventures consider subscribing and we are putting solar on the roof next and i'm doing something different again i'm using flexible solar panels something i've never installed before so if you want to see how to mount that stick around for the next video this is isaac signing out